Hello. We built a bat house that holds more than 400 bats and put it in a friend's backyard. Well, not here. It's up there. This is Dave. I'm Dave. Dave works in my office and he helps everyone. I do all the things and I help everybody out. He even brings donuts to the office. Don't mind if I do. You don't work in our office. Dave's got a pool in his backyard that used to be protected from insects by bats. But somebody came out here and cleared all the brush. And now... It's Bug City out here. So we're going to build a bat house for Dave to bring the bats back so he can use his pool. We downloaded these build plans from batcon.org where you take a pole, you build a box outside of the pole, a box outside of the box outside of the pole, and then a box outside of the box outside of the box outside of the pole with a roof on top so that bats can crawl inside and have a nice happy home. You can download these plans too from batcon.org because that's where we got them. We're building the whole thing out of cedar wood because cedar should survive outside, hopefully. Because we live in a swamp. The cedar that we have for this is already rough to the surface, but it's not rough enough. So I'm going to cut little slots in here to give the bats something else to grab as they crawl up inside the bat house. Kind of a bat ladder for our little bat friends. To cut the notches, I drew three lines on my saw to use for spacing and then set the blade for one-eighth of an inch. Then you just run it back and forth over and over again to make the slots. You can see these notches here that the bats can climb on to get all into right, the- Alright, tour group, see this way! Welcome to the shop! This is where all the magic happens! Flash photography is encouraged. Remember to tag your photos with Atomic Dairy, not a diary. Look at all of the tool stands and they are wonderful and great. All right, now we're gonna move along to the techno desk. Follow me, please. This way, right this way, everybody. The tour was not scheduled to 2.30. Well, anyway, you see the notches. This is how it all works. Now we just gotta cut the rest of them. box that goes outside of the pole but to create the box that goes outside of the box that goes outside of the pole we need to have boards that are wider than this well we don't have that however what we do have is a pocket hole jig so we're going to cut them to the length that we need but like half of that and then pocket hole because it's easy Well, completely expectedly, the pocket holes worked. Now we have boards, they're together, all they need is to be notched. Well, he notches them, I'm going to cut the spacers, so that way the bats have enough space to crawl up and down as you do as a bat. Slotting is pretty simple, there's just a lot of it to do. The spacers are 3 quarter inch square strips cut into 3 inch lengths. the standoff as a standoff. And I'm going to use the nail gun to tack it in place so we can put a screw in later. But this makes sure it doesn't wander. I'll put you. I'll put you. 
This is the innermost box, and this is the middle box. We are going to place the innermost box inside of the middle box. We're going to take three inch screws and go through these standoffs that we went ahead and nailed in. Now, to aid in this process, we went ahead and glued two of the pieces together and we did the other two the same. So we're going to use a clamshell design to put these together to make it easier because maneuvering four individual boards is a lot. Three inch exterior screws are countersunk and put in to hold everything together. I learned to use the impact driver sometime later. Half of the clamshell is attached. This thing's pretty solid. Now we just need the other half. The outside box is nearly a foot wide, so we used pocket holes once again to create a larger board. We slotted it and assembled it just like we did the other box. The bat house plans called for two slotted vents on two of the panels on the outside, so I used my trusty router to route those holes and give the bats a little air. Once the routing was complete, I got rid of the sawdust, flipped them over, and applied polyurethane to deal with all the bat guano the bats would bring. The final box was assembled like the first two boxes, with caulk on the edges to seal it against rain, 3 inch exterior screws to hold it all together, and then 3 inch screws into the standoffs to make sure it was very solidly built. From this angle you can see the structure taking shape. And now that it's all together, we finally have... The box outside of the box outside of the box outside of the pole. Time to paint. Gonna use some exterior paint that's tinted to this color. This bad house is gonna live outside, so it's cedar topped with Bondo, topped with primer, topped with three coats of outdoor paint. If that doesn't keep the alligators away from our bats, nothing will. The next day. And everything's dry. Now it's time for the final touch. This vent on the side is here to let the bats breathe a little bit, but swamp. So rain's a problem, sideways hurricane winds might be a problem, so I'm gonna put some copper foil down on top of this to make a little awning. Keep it dry inside. The bat house is complete. The next step is to assemble the steel pole we're gonna to use to mount this so that our bat friends can move in. For the bat box. This is good. Now the final step to this project is we need a metal pole to put this on. Now we thought this would be easy peasy lemon squeezy because it's just a pole but it has been nothing but difficult difficult lemon difficult to find a pole because to get a 20 foot tall pole it is $300 and that's dumb and foolish. So we're beating the system. We are taking three galvanized poles and standing them on top of each other just like how you do at the movie theater with your friends in a trench coat to pay for one movie ticket for three people. We're doing the exact same thing except for this here bat box. Now that all that's left to do is to pour the concrete. We're going to dig a hole with our shovels to put this in, this, this tube here that the pole will slot into so that it will be removable should we ever have to take the bat house down. The hole is three feet deep with a footer in the bottom and two feet wide at the top. 
When we started filling it with concrete, we discovered, to our horror, that it holds 400 pounds of concrete. This bad house isn't going anywhere. Thanks to Kevin, we are set and ready to go. It's all poured and ready for the bad house to go in, which just needs to cure. Much later. And now we assemble the team and stand this thing up. Well, that's it for the Bad House Project. It's all built. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Check out our other videos. We make stuff all the time. But that's it for now. See you next time. built a bad house to... <laughs> Before you on this very day, I have a great catch. A 45 inch piece of cedar. Are you in? You're in. Oh! That's not good. No! What an enigma! Gonna use some exterior... I'm Batman. Nice. That might not be a good thing. It's nighttime right now, so. Got it. Wait. Too late. Oh. Run. <laughs> now, it's cute. I'm gonna start that over. <laughs> box outside of the box, outside of the box, outside of the man. Um... Oh. Where's the drill? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's burning a floor. Easy. Is it? No. He even brings donuts for everybody. You're way too slow. It, it's like a helmet. Big 80s. I'm gonna do that one more time. <laughs> I'm trying it. Do you wanna hand me the bomb? Now it's time to build a box. No. No. If you think pocket holes are cheating, I really don't care. Yes. Rolling. I hit the thing. Here's the plan. That's funny. As standoffs. And. The next step is to... I'm Batman. I actually don't know at all what I'm about to say. Go. No. Okay, good. Stop, stop, stop. Batman. Wait, 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 wait.